Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're gonna to learn how to repair a damaged trigger on a Conibear kind of trap. So I recently released a course on outdoor core on survival trapping, uh, specifically with the Conibear kind of trap. So that course focuses on trapping techniques that aren't standard fur bearing trapping techniques. A lot of it is geared to more survival trapping and trapping for food. And as I was filming that course, I noticed I had a lot of damaged traps. Now this is something that when you do your initial inspection, for the season and you uh, dye your traps or paint your traps, whatever technique you're using, this is when you would uh, identify any damaged traps and repair them then. This is not something you're gonna do in the field. This is gonna be a bench type project. So in that course, I mentioned that this was something that I didn't really feel fit in with the survival trapping course itself, but it's something that you should probably know. So I referenced that I would put a video on my YouTube channel so if this is your first time here and you're from Outdoor Core, welcome to my channel. If you're normally from my channel and you are interested in this course, I'll put a link in the description below to send you over to Outdoor Core for that course. The wire triggers on a kind of bear, there's supposed to be two of them. And sometimes they come straight from the factory, just straight down. And I leave them like that if I'm using a baited set. But traditionally I bend them out and I try to make a full use of this opening. So you can bend these things a lot of different ways. And unfortunately, these things do break from time to time. It is not that often. I've probably got 30, maybe 40 condor bears, and I've probably got five or six with damaged triggers. Now, I really haven't had to screw with these in the past. I've bought used traps that had a damaged trigger, and I had to repair those before I put them into service. But usually they're, uh, they're pretty durable. So this is a two spring 155 and this is a 110. So you're all looking about the same trap. Uh, this, sometimes you'll break one. And this same technique I'm showing you works for all the traps. This is a big 220. And in this case, all the triggers are broken. So if you're serious about trapping or long-term self-reliance skills, or if you were gonna depend on these in a survival trapping kit, repairing these triggers is probably a good thing to know. Again, this is not something you're gonna have to improvise in the field. This is something that you're gonna be doing in a camp or a cabin or the homestead or something like that. So it does require some base tools and I'm gonna to cover those right now. Here's a pretty good picture here. The original wire trigger on all the traps I have are riveted in place. And I've got, I don't know, four or five different brands probably, but they're all primarily the same kind of thing. So a rivet has a head on it similar to a bolt and it slides into a drilled hole and instead of having a nut on the backside to keep from slipping out, a rivet is actually peened over. So sometimes there's a rivet setting tool. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it, but the steel is actually upset and mushroomed. So this is a permanent connection. This will never get loose. Uh, this is something that you have to drill out. So the size drill bits you're gonna be using for this kind of varies a little bit on your exact trap. This is a, this is a 532nd. I've got the next size up as well. And what you wanna do is you're gonna drill the head of this rivet or the upset end of this rivet and you're just gonna drill away that upset end. We don't have to drill all the way through the entire rivet. Once this head's clear or once the upset portion's clear, we can tap it out with a chisel. So you want your drill bit to be around the same diameter as the shaft of the rivet itself. So all you're doing is gonna cut through the upset end. So here's a pretty good shot. This is one I've pre-done because I've got a couple to do today. And once you drill that through, you're able to drive it out and we can attach new triggers. So this is a broken trigger wire. This is one I took out of the uh, trap I drilled out. And we're just gonna be replacing this with a coat hanger. Trapping a wire would work. I would not use like a 14 gauge. This is a little bit stronger than that. Now the color is obviously not gonna be right, but again, this is something we're doing before trapping season. So when we're prepping our traps and getting ready for the upcoming season, that's when we change our triggers, make everything's functional and working properly, and then this will die up or paint up just like the trap itself. So when I have a drill bit, I've got a drill motor as well. I'm gonna be using a pair of linesman's pliers to cut the coat hanger. We're gonna need a small hammer. And then I have a punch and a small chisel just to open up the uh, tab itself. Now, neither of these two items are required. You could use a bolt or a nail or anything to pop that rivet out. 
uh, it should not take that much force, but a punch like this just makes your life a whole lot easier. So to reattach the trigger wire, instead of using rivets again, I'm just gonna be using common uh, nut and bolts. So this is a flathead screw mount. This is like a number six screw. Number four would work also if you're shopping for the hardware store. These are, uh, this number six will work. I might have to open the hole up just a little bit with a larger size drill bit. So switching from a permanent rivet to a nut and a bolt, obviously is not gonna be quite as strong. They do sell a replacement trigger kit for the Conibear Trap. And in that replacement trigger kit, they include wire and they include a nut and a bolt. Uh, they are not riveted in when you get a replacement kit right from the trap manufacturer. So the nut and the bolt's less than ideal. The nut and the bolt is completely serviceable and it just requires a little bit more maintenance for you to make sure that that nut and bolt combination never get loose. So you can probably do this job without a vise, but you probably can't do it safely and easily without a vise. Now when I chuck this up into my vise, again, the rivet has a, a peened over end, which is kind of hollow. And then there's a rounded end that looks kind of like a carriage bolt. So you're gonna chuck this up in the vise and you're gonna have the hollowed end, the peened out end facing you. All right, so I'm looking right at the end of that rivet and I'm just gonna go ahead and drill this out. So once the peened over portion of that rivet was drilled out, I was able to just go ahead and tap it through. To finish it and knock the rivet all the way out of the hole, I just transferred over to that small anvil. Anything had worked. The base of the uh, vise would have worked just as well, but there was an anvil sitting there. And then right now, that trigger just wiggles out. And you can see I've got a nice clean hole. Now, if this is your first time doing this and you don't have access to hardware, you would walk into the hardware store with your trap and size it up. Uh, I have a number six here, and a number six is just a little bit undersized, so I'm telling you right now, a number four is gonna be the money. Because this is what I've got, and I've got a drill bit here, I'm just gonna open this up. It's so close to fitting, it just, just needs just a little bit of help. So I'm gonna put it right back in the vise and just open it up until my number six screw that I have works in this hole. So I still got plenty of meat in that hole. I didn't drill it too close to the edge. And the hardware that I have with me is gonna work out just fine. So this one came apart with no issue. So as soon as I hit it with the, with the punch, it separated, I was able to pull the wire out by hand. I have had them that were either rusted or had more trap dye and they were all gunked up and I could not get it to just pull out like that. So that's why I have that small metal chisel just to split this opening just a little bit more. So we have an old trigger here for a template. If you had one like my 220 that was missing its trigger entirely, you just have to improvise this a little bit or look at one of your other traps and use that as a template. But I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out a section of this. And again, anything will work, but I'm using this coat hanger right now. And I'm just gonna, just gonna do it backwards here. I'm gonna measure out how much I want over, about that much. I want my trigger about this long to the first bend. Now I'm looking for that pretty sharp angle. And I guess this is probably the only critical portion of it is this area here has gotta be the right width. So as long as I get that okay, the whole thing should work pretty well. So as long as I get this top portion about the same, and that's not bad right now, probably two pair of pliers would have helped. I'm gonna use my vise to kind of hold that a little bit. And now I'm just making the other leg of it. And I'm gonna cut it just a little bit long, that way I can adjust it. 
So this is not too bad. You want it to look as symmetrical as possible. And there are a ton of different uh, trigger systems for a kind of bear or different ways you can bend your triggers depending on what you're doing. Uh, this one's still a little long. Now I'm gonna fit this top portion and just make sure I've got this right. And that looks really good. You don't want this to be a whole lot wider than this. There's little grooves actually. I don't know if you can see it all that well. But these little grooves hold the wire in. So if you can at least have your downward bends in those grooves, the trigger is gonna be a lot more stable. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and insert a screw. And put a nut on the back side and everything's still loose right now until I get a little bit of tension on it. Right now the screw's just a little bit tight and we can see how off I am. So I'm just gonna try to center it up, get it as square as possible. Now in this particular one, it's got enough grit to it where the nut's not slipping. If that did, then you, you just use your linesman's or a pair of channel locks. And then just go ahead and fix your triggers. Make them look exactly like you want them. Now the main thing with the triggers are you want them to swing free of the trap. So that's the golden rule with trigger bending is you can make this look any way you want to, but you cannot have it bent so far out that it's actually hitting the jaw of the trap itself. Once you prep this trap for season and you dye it or spray paint it, whatever you happen to be doing, this is all gonna blend in fine. This is now your area of worry. So when you pick your traps up, you know, for the first time of the season, you're just gonna go ahead and test fire it and you're just gonna make sure that that nut and bolt's tight. So that's just one more step that you don't have with a riveted trigger. But you've taken a trap that was damaged, and these things do, do get damaged from time to time. And you've made it uh, completely functional again. So with a little know-how and a couple tools and a coat hanger, you've taken a damaged trap and you've given it life again. This trap is going to give you years of service. This trigger is completely serviceable. This is no different than any other trap I've got in my kit right now. So whether it's your own traps that get damaged through service or you buy old used traps and you're going to have this occasionally. So this is definitely something worth learning. Till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.